Hallelujah. So, um, let's pray. Father, we thank you because you are good and your mercy endures forever. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for the revelation of your word. Thank you because your word is true. Your word is powerful and your word can transform. We give you praise because by the reason of your word, we are going to be changed. Our lives will be transformed. And the name of your son, Jesus, will be glorified. We will receive revelation today. We will receive our chance. We will receive boldness. We will receive grace to be doers of the word. And not the errors only. Thank you, Father, for answer prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. If you can hear me clearly, shout Amen. 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 Uh, tonight, amen. I have been to speak on understanding man and his dominion. Understanding man and his dominion. Uh, this is a very broad topic that would have loved us to do a proper Bible study on the subject. Uh, looking from Genesis through the writings of the, of the prophets, to the gospel and to the epistles, we do a, a proper incisive study for a time with the us tonight. I'm still believing the Lord that uh, much will be covered, much will be done as we look at who God made man to be. We are going to look at Genesis, we are going to look at two scriptures, uh, basically Genesis chapter 1, Verse 26 to 28, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 28, and Psalms 8, verse 4 to 9. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 28, and Psalms 8, chapter, uh, Psalm chapter 8, verse 4 to 9. I will read from here, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Verse 27, So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created it in, male and female created it them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, replace the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the power of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Psalms chapter 8. Psalms chapter 8. Verse 4 to 9. What is man that thou art mightful of him, and the son of man that thou feastest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hand. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all the sheep and all him, yea, and the beast of the field, the fowl of the hare, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth thou through the path of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Now, Moses in his chronicle of creation gave a picture of the creation and how God, the order of creation, how God did everything he did in order. Like I have told brethren once, God can create everything he created in seven days, in a day. However, God, everything he created in six days, rather, in a day. However, God took, um, he made sure that the creation span, spanned across his days. To show us that God is a God of order. God is a God of process. And God is a God of timing. Let me say it again. God could create everything he created in a day. But it took six days to show us that he's a God of order. He's a God of process. 
and is a God of timing. Now, he's a God of order because God ensured that everything he created a day before, what is created after, we need what is created before to survive. So, for example, God said the light, then God created the, big, the bigger light and the smaller light because actually um, God knew that the grass will need the sun and the moon, I'm just giving an example, to survive. Photosynthesis did not come because of the fall of man. Actually, it's part of the order of creation. Um, um, plants, we created food. So what I would say is that everything created in day one, what was created in day two, we need day one. We need what is made in day one to survive. God is a God of order. Do you understand? And God does things in order. So actually, when God puts your life in order, it's because God knows that what you need in the future, what you are passing through now, you will need it in the future. Do you understand? What you are experiencing now, you will need it when? In the future. Please, do you understand? So actually, it came to a point that God created a being called man as the seed of all his creation. Man was the head, was the seed of all God's creation. And do you know one thing about that? Was that God ensured that everything man would need to survive was created for man before man came on the scene. Process. Process. For man to survive, God understood that there are things he will need. So God ensured that he created everything he will need. The heart he will need, God created it. The hair he will need, it has been there. The sun he will need, it has been there. The moon he will need, it has been there. Everything he needed to survive, God created it. I used to tell brethren, God created everything for man. He created man for himself. Hallelujah. God created everything for man. He created man for himself. So, what I want to bring out is this. When God wanted to create man, there was a, a, a meeting that he called in verse 26. He said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Then he gave us the, the, the reason, the, 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 the thought behind the creation called man. He said that they may have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the bed of the air, and over everything that calleth upon the face of the air. So God created man actually for government. Let me say it again. God created man for government. The word dominion means to rule, to have, to, to, to take administrative responsibility. So God created man for administration, to administrate every other thing that God has created. God created man to be a God on the face of the earth. God created man to be his representative, his ambassador on the face of the earth so that he would be a God over every other thing that God has created. But God did not stop there. When we got to verse 28, the, the Bible gave us a clear picture of actually what transpired. What did the Bible say? The Bible says, and God blessed them. You know, the Bible says in verse 27, it said, said um, male and female created in them. So actually what we saw in, in um, Genesis chapter 2 was just a proper explanation of what happened in Genesis chapter 1. Do you understand? Uh -huh. What we saw in chapter 2 when uh, Adam's uh, God now made Adam to sleep, then brought the rib. It was, not, it was not chronological. What happened in chapter 2 was actually a proper explanation of what transpired between verse 26 of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 28. So male and female created in them, then God put them blessing over them. God has said, be fruitful. Because God understood that for man to have dominion, there is a shame, there are shames of events that must happen. Please follow this teaching very well. There are chains of events. There, is a, there, there are shames of events that must happen for man to fulfill the purpose of his creation. So when you hear purpose actually, the purpose of man's creation was dominion. Do you understand? That was, that was the intention in the heart of God when God was creating man. God did not create man for any other thing than primarily for him to have dominion on the face of the earth and to have fellowship with God. 
So that's why you will see in Genesis chapter 3, I think verse 8, you will see the Bible told us that God um, 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 God came in the, in the cool of the evening. Do you understand? To fellowship with Adam. Do you understand? You, you, we see, we saw that prototype in Genesis chapter 3. Because, uh, no, no person. Yeah. Because that's the, that's the idea. That's, that's, the, that's the concept. God created, God created man for that purpose. To have dominion on the earth and to have fellowship. So, man is dual purpose. Man is dual purpose. Man is purpose on the earth was to be. Will take administrative is focused in the realm of the spirit. I mean, in with the with the ability is to to uh, is focused in the realm of divinity to fellowship is to fellowship. So actually, man, man will not function appropriately when man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I used to I used to, yeah. So actually, man will be out of place. Man will be cranky. Man will not fulfill is is not fulfilled when there is no when there is no dominion is having and when there is no fellowship is having. If you read if you read the Bible very well, you will discover that everything God created, God spoke He spoke to the ground to bring forth the sand, um, the, to to bring up the plants. So everything God created, God spoke to something to bring it forth. And the, the source of that creation will need uh, the creation. We need the his source of creation to survive. But when God wanted to create man, he spoke to himself. That's to tell you that for man to survive, for man to keep thriving, um, man must keep in touch with God. That was why the, when, when God said, the day you eat the fruit, you will die. And we saw that the moment Adam ate the fruit, he didn't fall down physically and die. But the death was that there was a separation in fellowship between himself and God. The, the God that we appear before and he will go and meet that God became the one that appeared and he said, I have thy voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked. Fellowship was broken. What man was created for? Dominion and fellowship. And by the fall of Adam, these two key reasons for which God created man became perverted. So man started looking out for fellowship in other things. Man started having dominion over fellow men. God did not create man to have dominion over other men. God created man to have dominion over creation. Hallelujah. Are you following? Please, if you are following, shout hallelujah. Good. hallelujah. God did not create God did not create man to have dominion over hallelujah. fellow men. God created man to have dominion over creatures, over every other thing that God has made. So every man has that God potential in him. That God potential in him. But you know, by the fall of man, that that potential became uh, um, out dead, smoothed, depraved, perverted. So man and we, we, so we all know the story. Now, Psalm 8 emphasizes this fast again. The fact that God created man for dominion. You know, it seems as if the psalmist was caught in the realm of the spirit and it looked at man and how God seems to have relationship with man. How God seems to care for man so much. Then the psalmist said, what is man that thou art mindful of him? What is man that even when he fell, you will still send your son to come and rescue man what is man that thou art man full of him not son all son of man that thou fear for him and the bible told you, it said thou has made him a little lower than angels actually the, the original did not call it angels the originals call it elohim in the originals is thou had made him lower than god a little lower than god so in the hierarchy of creation, man is lower to God. But actually, man became lower to angels by the virtue of the fall. And how? Follow this teaching very well. By the virtue of the fall. And uh, by the virtue of the fact that they could die. So by death, man became a little lower than angels. However, 
the redeemed in Christ, who has the rescue from death, is not lower than the angels. Hallelujah. That is why the Bible told us that we should not worship angels. You will never see that instruction in, in the Old Testament. Now, I, I'm not saying they were worshipping angels, but you never see instructions that says they should not worship angels in the Old Testament. However, there was a clear cut instruction in Colossians chapter 2 that uh, we should not worship angels. That in, Paul called it vain philosophy. So when men worship angels, they call it false humility. So what I'm saying is that the redeemed man who has been is not a little lower than the angels. Let me just say that. Uh, angels are ministering spirits. Not to every man. The Bible called them ministering spirits. Hebrews um, chapter 1, I think verse 14. Said they are ministering spirits to those who will become what? Heirs of salvation. Hallelujah. Please, do you understand what I'm saying? If you understand what I'm saying, shout hallelujah. 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 Do you understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. If you're not, if you're not, I'm following Hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. Good. 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 So, uh, so in Psalm 8, we saw that picture again. The Bible made us to understand that um, God made man, He created man to have dominion. He said, thou hast, thou hast made him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. And you see all things under his feet, all sheep and all sin, yea, and the beast of the field, and the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the path of the sea. Everything God made, God made them so that man can have dominion over them. So that is properly established. And uh, we, we are going to look at how this issue, this issue of dominion, is applicable to us as believers today. We're going to look at that again. But before we get there, I want us to look at something in that verse 28 of Genesis chapter 1. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 28, you will see, uh, God, the Bible says, male and female created in them, and he blessed them. To bless in that scripture actually means to proclaim empowerment, to declare words that will energize them. So God knew that he created man for dominion, but man will not become who God created him to be overnight. Let me tell you something today. Adam did not fulfill the purpose of his creation. Hallelujah. Adam did not fulfill the purpose of his creation. He has not. He has not. In fact, he didn't start the fulfillment. Because now, the pattern of God for that creation was not explained in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. He said, so God blessed them and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply. Can you see that? Now, the, the chain of events, let's look at it now, is that one, they will be fruitful. For them to have dominion, they must first be fruitful. Then the Bible says they will multiply. Their multiplication is in their fruitfulness. Then when they multiply, they will replenish the earth. The word replenish there means to feel again. To feel again. So what actually, the chain of events, is that man will become fruitful, the man will multiply, the man will replenish the earth. When they multiply, they will now fill the earth again. Then in, when they fill the earth, the Bible now says they will subdue. The word subdue, let me explain this word in the original Hebrew. It means they will contend for. There is a contention. You know the Yoruba, the Yoruba gave us a clear picture. The Yoruba says El Kaware. That means there is, there is an enemy. There is someone that seems to uh, want to ensure that man did not become what God created him to be. And we saw the enemy appear in Genesis chapter 3. You will, look, throughout Genesis 1, you won't hear anything about the devil. You won't. You won't. You won't hear anything about the devil. But listen, the moment this word of proclamation came, and he saw the intention of God, that God has something to do on earth. God has placed a man here. He has given this man a help, and they are to be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it. Then, in your Bible, can you see? They have dominion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Subdue it and have dominion. So the dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over every living thing that went upon the earth, is planted in the fact that man will be fruitful, 
they will multiply, they will replenish the earth, and they will subdue it. So when God, you know, in Genesis chapter 2, when God gave us a picture and said, uh, uh, it's not good for man to be alone, I will make him an elf. What God created Eve for, what God created our elf for, the elf was not to be keeping the garden. Hallelujah. The elf that God created the man for, um, the woman for man, was not to be keeping the garden. You know, there's a whole lot of wrong teachings on the concept of purpose today. We think we teach our career as purpose. So what's your purpose? My purpose is to be a banker. My purpose is to take care of the agent. My purpose is to, is to, is to, is to feed the poor. No. Those could be platforms. They could be expressions. They could be plans. They could be good things. But actually, there is a singular purpose for which God made man. And actually when he, wa- he knew that Adam could not fulfill that purpose alone. So he gave him a woman to help him. And what was that purpose? The purpose was to have dominion. And what was the help that Eve must give? The help was that Adam with Eve will become fruitful. Do you get the picture now? They will, they will, they will fill the earth with God kind. Am I speaking heresy? Let me show you in Malachi chapter 2. If you read your Bible very well, Malachi chapter 2, verse 14 and 15, you will see the Bible. The Bible told us that where, what, for what reason did God make them one? Why did God make them one? The reason why God made them one is so that God can have a godly seed. Go and read Malachi 2, verse 14 and 15. When you read 1 Corinthians chapter 7, too, when Paul was talking on marriage, verse, uh, chapter 7, verse 14 and 15, I think so, the Bible spoke about the sanctification of the seed that comes from the union of a believer. So what I'm saying is that God intend that man will fill the earth with God kind. Because man was created in the image, Adam was created in the image and the likeness of God. So God intend that man, Adam, through his union with his wife, will fill the earth again with that kind. They will be fruitful. They will multiply. They will replenish the earth. They will subdue it. Then they will have dominion. That's the intention of God. That's the plan of God. That's the plan of God. But before Adam started living out that purpose, the enemy came. The enemy knew the potency, the potency of this. The enemy knew. So the enemy came. And the enemy aborted that plan. He aborted that plan. A man was driven out of the garden. Then he seems as if he has won. Because, you know, the Bible spoke in first, um, Second Corinthians chapter 4. If you read um, verse, verse 4 to verse, verse 5, I think. Verse 4 to verse 5. He said, In whom the God of this world has blinded their eyes, left the light of the gospel to shine the earth. What I'm saying is that, who is the God of this world? Satan. So by the virtue of Adam's fall, Satan became the god of this world. God made Adam to be the god of this world, but Adam sold out to the devil. Adam fell. Do you know one thing the devil did? The other, the devil ensured that another thing is that man's race will become perverted. Have you ever, have you ever done on you? That in Genesis chapter 6, when the Bible told us that the sons of God looked down the daughters of men and found out they were feared and they started sleeping with them and they gave back to giants. You don't understand the intention of the devil through that plot. You don't understand what he wants to achieve. Actually, when you study that scripture very well, you understand that actually the devil wants to ensure that the human race become perverted that there will, do, there will be no women again that everything will become an abridged version man with demons do you know all kind of breeds will come up that's what the devil wants to do that's what he wants to achieve man will become a paper mache all kind of things coming together there won't be a straight line so what actually many of us don't understand what transpired when it, it seems as if that it was the lineage of Enoch, Enoch through Methuselah through Noah, that was preserved out of the whole earth. Only, only one family of eight was preserved. Only one family of eight. Can you imagine? Out of the whole earth, only one family of eight was preserved. The reason is because, actually, the reason is because every other race on the earth has been perverted. That's the intention of the devil, to pervert the plans of God, to pervert the original that God has given to man, to pervert the original lineage, the clean lineage, the pure lineage that God has created. So Adam failed, and we saw that in the Bible, and it seems as if the devil has won, until God brought Jesus on the scene. 
Hallelujah. Now let me quickly show you one end. One, one of the things that happened later, later in Jesus' ministry. I mean, after he died and was resurrected. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. We all know the story. We all know the story. The Bible says, I'm being found, verse 8. I'm being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. We have forgot also and highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every other name. Look at it. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Now, what does it mean to bow? It means to submit. It means to 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 give obedience. It means to to yeah to submit. Let me use that word. To submit to a particular governmental rule. Bow now. That every knee should bow. Look at that. Of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Many of us don't understand the scripture. This verse 10 actually is a reflection of the dominion mandate that God gave to Adam. God gave to Adam that we have dominion over the fish of the sea. Where is the sea? Under the earth. Over the birds of the air. Where is the air? Over the earth. That's like heaven. And everything that creepeth upon the earth. Now, when the Bible spoke about the name of Jesus, it said, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. And it, it, didn't, it didn't say of men. It said of things. Look at that. Of things in heaven. So actually, what was lost in Adam, I just want to show you, this is the, this is the end I'm going to. What was lost in Adam was restored in Christ. And it was restored in Christ such that through his name, by the mention of his name, everything in heaven, on earth, under the earth was bound. Now, after that was the intention of God for Adam. Now, when people hear Adam, when man comes, every other creation creeps, every other creation submits. That's the intention of God. That's the plan of God. That's the, that's the will of God. But we saw that in the scripture, uh, Adam failed. And that intention was fulfilled in the Lord Jesus. So he submitted to, to uh, the process of the cross. And um, God has highly exalted him and given him wisdom above every name. And the name of Jesus, every nation now, of things, underline that word in your Bible, verse 10. Things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth. So the dominion mandate was restored in Christ Jesus. However, how was he restored? Let's look at the process. How was he restored? Let me tell you something today. There is no accident in the Bible. I will show you a mystery about the creation of Eve today. There is no, there is no accident in the Bible. You know, when Paul wanted to explain the concept of marriage in Ephesians chapter 5, if you read from verse 21 downwards, you will discover that Paul keep uh, comparing marriage with Jesus and the church. Husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Wife, submit to your husband as the church submit to Christ. Do you understand? And you know, in one voice, he was talking about husband-wife relationship. In the other voice, he was talking about Jesus-church relationship. Because actually, uh, Jesus being the last Adam, God had to take him through the process he took the first Adam through. Just follow. So that, uh, that was why you know, if you read your Bible very well, just in Matthew chapter 4, that the devil that tempted Eve, tempted him. Before we move there, let me just show you one scripture. First Corinthians 15. First Corinthians chapter 15. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Kaleis, Hayaman, Sikena, Robaske, Ravaziana, Mosida, Landa, Radabakino. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45. 45. So it is written. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. So, we have two Adam in the Bible now. We saw the first Adam, the Bible called him a living soul. We saw that in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. said, and God out of the ground made, uh, uh, made a man, bred the bread of life in him, and man became a living being. Uh, so, the called it a living soul. But the Bible called the last Adam a quickening spirit. It's not just a, a living soul. The Bible called him a quickening spirit. Now, what made him a quickening spirit? And I want us to just follow me very, very well. The same devil, like I told you, so we have two men now. We have the first Adam, 
who lost what God gave him, and we have the last Adam, who became what God intended him to become. But listen, just for me. Uh, so what happened? The same way the first Adam was tempted, the last Adam was tempted, just that the, the devil did not find a wife to come through. So the devil came directly to him. In Genesis, the devil came to his help. And through the earth, the devil entered Adam. But in Matthew chapter 4, the devil could not come. There was nobody the devil could, could come to. So he came directly to Jesus. He tempted Jesus and Jesus defeated him. But you know what the Bible says? The Bible says he left him for a season. The devil did not understand. That's why the Bible told us in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. That if the prince of this world had known, they would, if the, uh, the king of this world had known, they wouldn't have killed the prince of life. They would have killed Jesus. They didn't know. They didn't know the, the mystery that God was trying to do. So when he tempted Jesus and he felt uh, that Jesus passed, the Bible says he left him for a while. Uh, he tried to kill Jesus over and over again. Jesus kept escaping. But the last, when he got him at last and he took him to the cross and crucified him and he killed him, I mean the devil. The devil thought he had won. He thought he had defeated the last Adam the way he defeated the first Adam. But he didn't know that it is in his death that, that his bride rebutted. Let me say it again. The devil did not know that it was in the death of the last Adam that his bride will be battered. Let me give you a simile from the scripture. God, when he wanted to make Eve, ensured that Adam slept. Remember? The Bible says, and God made him fall asleep. And God took out of his rib to make him a help. Now, for God to bat the church, or for the church to be made, eh, the last Adam had to sleep. Hallelujah. Listen, the sleep of, of Adam was a typology of, a de- of the death of Jesus. I'm just giving you a, 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 a simile, please. I'm just giving you a simile. It was a typology. Such that when he came out, eh, he could see in the bone of his bone and the flesh of his flesh. That's what the Bible calls the church, the body of Christ. Do you understand? The body of Christ. What Adam saw was his body. This is the bone of my bone. This is the flesh of my flesh. But for the bone of the bone to come and the very well to come, Adam had to sleep. God made him sleep. Then God made it and God brought him out. The same way God made Jesus die. Eh? It was a form of sleep. And in three days, on the third day, the Lord raised him from the dead. By that raising, there was a battle. The battle of the church. If Jesus was not raised from the dead, there would be a battle of the church. Hallelujah. Men cannot be saved. It, 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 it's through his resurrection. The Bible says in Romans 4, 25. He was delivered for our offenses. He was raised for our justification. If he was not raised, men cannot be justified. And if men are not justified, the church is not battered. Because what makes the church is the justified man. Do you understand? What makes the church is the, 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 the conglomerate of justified men. So what I'm saying in essence, what I'm saying in clarity today for every one of us to understand is that actually what happened to the first Adam happened to the last Adam. The first Adam failed the temptation. The last Adam passed the temptation. The first Adam slept and his help was made. The help that made him fall. The last Adam, do you understand? Slept died and was raised and his bride was made his bride was brought forth who is, which is the church and listen that is very good the same intention of god placed upon the first adam was the place no intention placed upon the last adam that god's kind will be battered on the face of the earth so what is the point god the, the first adam needed an eve to be fruitful the last adam needed the church to be fruitful hallelujah are you following what I'm saying? The last Adam needed the church to be fruitful. So, for example, his kind was, was, was seen in the church, which is his body. But it takes that church to start replicating his kind. And we saw it in Acts of chapter 2, where Peter stood up and preached the gospel. And the Bible says 3,000 souls were saved. The next time we saw 5,000 souls were saved. And we keep seeing men, men getting saved now when men get saved that is a battle that is why it's called being born again it's a battle battle of god's kind on the face of the earth the bible says he that is born of god sinneth not why because he has the seed of god in him he's a god kind so actually man 
the last Adam cannot be fruitful if the church is not in place. The same way the first Adam cannot be fruitful if Eve was not in place. Please, is it clear? If you are following me, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is, 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 is this picture getting clearer? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, now, follow me. So the intention is that through the first Adam, God desired that if we become fruitful, uh, if they are not falling, they will give back to God's kind, then they will um, multiply, and they will fill the earth again, and they will subdue the earth, and they will have dominion. They will have dominion. Now, when that failed, God has a plan in the last Adam. In that last Adam, God intended that we will still be fruitful. We will be fruitful by bathing God's kind as the church on earth. Then we will multiply. So we saw in Acts chapter 2, only 120 men are the upper room. 120 men. Today is estimated that there are close to 1 billion, uh, there are close to uh, 2.5 billion Christians on earth. 2.5 billion Christians on earth. Uh, in fact, it was spoken that, uh, it was estimated that there are close to 1 billion Pentecostals on earth. 1 billion Pentecostals on earth. Now, what I want to bring out is this. What I want to bring out is this. 120 men at the upper room in the space of 2,000 years had become over a billion. Can you see that? They became so fruitful. They were peasants. They were ordinary men. Ordinary men. Men that people could have just looked down on. They were ordinary men, but they became supernatural men when the power of God came on them. And we saw those ordinary men turning the world upside down. We saw those ordinary men spreading the God kind all over the earth to India, to Ethiopia, to Mongolia, to Australia, to Brazil, to North America, to Africa. We saw the whole earth. Look, should I tell something today? There is no nation on the earth where Christianity is not. Even in Saudi Arabia. Even in Saudi Arabia. Are you going to answer it now? Even in Saudi Arabia. That's to tell you the power in fruitfulness. So, the, what's the point? The point is that Jesus, as a church on the earth, his bride, who has been replicating his kind on the face of the earth. So, we are becoming fruitful. It's in our multiplication that we became that we are replenished the earth. We are filling the earth again. The earth was once filled with all kinds of perversion. In, the, in Africa, we know, we know this perversion. Human sacrifices. In Africa, worshipping of idols. And that is how it is all over the world. But when 20 men started, uh, uh, became the, 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 the centerpiece by which God we accomplish a purpose on the face of the earth. And we, they, they fill the earth again with God's kind. They feel they have to deal with God with God's car. And God could look up heaven and find men. In the days of Lot, God could not find. God could not find ten faithful men. Can you imagine? God could not find ten faithful men. Just imagine that. Ten faithful men in the whole of two cities. In the whole of two cities, God could not find ten faithful men. But as as God we have it today. By the righteousness that we have in Christ Jesus, there are millions, hundreds of millions, billions of people who have been made righteous in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. God's kind. The place we have replaced the earth and we subdue. Then the Bible says we have dominion. Now the dominion of the church actually is in part. It will start in this age, but it will not be it will, it will not come to a full fulfillment in this age. Because, you know, that's why the Bible spoke about the millennial reign of Christ. The millennial, have you ever done on you? The millennial reign of Christ is, is a governmental thing. Christ coming to reign on the face of the earth. On the face of the earth. Do you understand? Because that was what God created man for. Man fell. So the last Adam, the last Adam, we fulfill what the first Adam failed to. To reign again on the earth. Today he's reigning on the earth through his church. Today he's reigning on the earth in his name. That is why you can tell a demon, get out in the name of Jesus and it will get out. 
You can speak to nature in the name of Jesus and it will respond. Do you understand? Because there is a dominion we can exercise on the face of the earth. There's a dominion we can exercise on the face of the earth. So actually, as we're rounding up tonight, I just want us to op- I want to open our hearts to the dominion we have as a people. Today, not every human being on earth has dominion. But the man in Christ has dominion. The man in Christ has dominion. And every of his dominion, every of his dominion is wrapped up in the name of Jesus. The name is like the visa given to us to enter into the land of dominion. So when we engage that name, we explore different ranks of our dominion. Of the, of the things in heaven, of the things on earth, of the things of the earth. When we speak the name of Jesus, when, when the name of Jesus in the lips of the man who has understanding is as potent as anything. Is as potent as anything. So when we speak the name of Jesus, things in heaven respond. When we mention the name of Jesus, things on earth respond. When we mention the name of Jesus, things under the earth respond. That was what Adam lost, and that was what Jesus entrusted to humanity via the church. Via the church. So, what is our responsibility today? What's our responsibility? I'll just mention two things. Number one, our responsibility today is to preach the gospel to others. The way we become fruitful is to preach the gospel we become fruitful primarily by preaching the gospel paul speaking in galatians 2 uh, chapter chapter 3 he was speaking to the galatian christian and he called them his son in who he has um, labored in labor pain until christ be formed in them can you see that so our function today is to ensure that we become by preaching the gospel, we go out there and we preach. When you preach the gospel to someone who is yet to be saved, the person does not understand and is not part of this family of dominion. When the person gets saved, the person gets included in what God is doing through Christ on the face of the earth. So that's how we become fruitful. We become fruitful that way. Number two, uh, I went on three. Number two, we become fruitful also when we raise godly seed. Oh, this thing has been coming over and over again to me as a person and I've been preaching on it and I'm believing the Lord, I, uh, I've been praying about it too. Now it will become part and parcel of, uh, it will become part and parcel of my testimony that I raise godly seed. You know, one of the things you must understand is that the reason why God wants you to marry right, why you as a believer cannot marry anybody, why you must marry someone that God is bringing to you is because God wants you to have a kind of marriage that will raise godly seed. That will raise godly seed. Only children. Children that will serve the Lord. Genesis 18, the Bible told us concerning Abraham. God looked down on him and God said, Will I hide anything from Abraham? Seeing that he's going to become the father of many nations, and seeing that he's going to teach his children to follow the ways of the Lord. God bless you. The intention of God is that we raise God bless you. That's the plan of God. That we raise God bless you. That we raise God bless you. And we must understand it. That's how you must marry right as a believer. Marry a believer. Marry someone who is submitted to God. Marry someone who has the active root that is befitting for your future so that you can raise God the seed. That's number two thing I would like us to take home today. Number one, we preach the gospel to the um, yet to be saved. Number two, if they are yet to be married, ensure you marry right so that you can raise God the seed. Then number three, understand tonight that every dominion you will exercise is in the name of Jesus. The dominion is in the name of Jesus. His name is the visa to the land of dominion. The name of Jesus is the visa to the land of dominion. And the name is potent only in the mouth of those who have been saved, those who have been regenerated. Remember the seven sons of Sceva in Acts chapter 19. The Bible told us that they they, they saw a madman and they said, we adjure you in the name of Jesus whom Paul preached. Get out. And the the demon spoke. Said, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. Who art thou? And you got to say, that's to tell you that the name of Jesus is Sam. The name of Jesus is not talisman. The name of Jesus is not something you chant. It's something you must understand. It's like a visa through which you have access to your dominion land. Every dominion you will exercise in Christ is wrapped up in that name. At the name of Jesus, every nation about of things in heaven, things on earth, and things under the earth. So why I conclude tonight, I want you to understand this thing clearly. Clearly and clearly. If you want to flow, in dominion as a man 
you must be born again. If you want to flow in your dominion as a man, you must understand what the name of Jesus entails. I will end up by singing this song tonight. Uh, it's a popular song for some of us who know. If you are, if you can sing with me. What a powerful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ the King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing can come again. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is not just beautiful. The name of Jesus is powerful. The name of Jesus is loaded. The name of Jesus is the vehicle by which we transverse. It's the vehicle by which we walk in the land of dominion. Rob a man of the name of Jesus. You rob him of the dominion. He can exercise on that. If you exercise your dominion on the face of the earth, you must understand the beauty of this thing. That is why you can't pray in any other name. There is no name. The Bible told us, Acts chapter 4 verse 12. There is no name that is given to man by which any man can be saved. Save the name of Jesus. No man can save any man. No name can save any man. Save the name of Jesus. It takes the name of Jesus for a man to be saved. It takes the name of Jesus for a man to walk in the reality of his dominion. Tonight I pray that wherever you are, the light of this revelation will dawn on you in the name of Jesus. The Lord will open your eyes. You will see the truth of this name. You will see the end of blessing in the name. In the name of Jesus. I would like to recommend a, a book for us. The book is titled The Name of Jesus by Kenneth E. Again. Uh, and there is another book written by uh, E.W. Kenyon called The Wonderful Name of Jesus. You understand the legal and the vital side of the usage of this name of Jesus. Tonight I call you blessed. Once again I want to appreciate the leaders of School of Prayer for this opportunity to preach the gospel. I'm so happy and so elated. I'm not taking this opportunity for granted. I say thank you very much. The Lord bless you. This school will keep progressing. This school will go from strength to strength, from glory to glory. Mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. it will be set for a school that was a training ground for which men, mighty men, were made. I declare in the name of Jesus, this school shall be a covenant where God raised giants in the name of Jesus. I speak this word as, as a prophecy. It shall be a covenant where God raised giants. It shall be a covenant where God raised giants. It shall be a covenant where God raised giants. It shall be a covenant where God raised giants. Thank you very, very much. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you. I'm glad to know. If anybody have, if you have any question, you can quickly ask so that I can. Uh, if there's any question, you can ask and. Um, I will be glad to give an answer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God, sir. So, so do you have any questions that we can... Um... <laughs> yes, that is... Um, yes, that is... Um, for... For blessing us tonight. I, I, I can't I hear that word very well. Though. Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm saying thank you, Dad, for tonight. Sir. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for blessing us this. Um, I would like to. I would like to ask my question in this form. Although I, I, I can't. But I would just like. I would just like more, more, um, more expression. Yes. When you were speaking, sir, you made mention of the fact that not every body on earth is actually having dominion right now, which is actually yes. Mm, um, but uh, as it were, when you look at Dangote, when you look at all these guys, can mm -hmm. we call their advancement dominion? Can we call their okay. wealth, their glamour? You know, can we call it dominion? Then number two. Okay. Looking at, looking at looking at the fact that we understand the original template that man should not dominate man then 
what time can we use for that then how how, how do we how uh, how do we how do we not say that you know in church today we pray about you know um otalimi and the likes we, we yes you know and this no. we are, we are we, well, I, I don't know maybe you seem to understand that yes 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 uh man do, man having dominion over the other man olu aba mi se bo ta mi kini na joba ni won lori baba so mi bi daddy man won ta won do you understand yes abi yes that's it. Uh, now let, let me let me let me start with the issue of Dangote Dominion and Co. Now let's get something clear. Let's get something clear. <clears throat> now we must understand Dominion in the in the context to which God wants man to have it. We must look, many things got perverted because of the fall of man. I've never been on you that to do the building of a tower that leads to heaven would have been seen as a landmark achievement. But God saw it as rebellion. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Amen, sir. Do you understand? So, what, what yes. we could have ah, eh? They want to build a, a, to, a tower that would get to, the, to heaven, you know? Uh, they, we, they, we've been told that they, they want to go and switch God. No, that was not the issue, actually. The issue was that mm. the intention of God is that they would spread across, across the face of the earth. They want to live against that. They don't want to spread across the earth. The earth. So they want to build a tower that will reach up there. And God said, no, this is not possible. So what I'm saying is that, listen, if you look at those men at Torah, Baba, they were having great achievements, but God said that's not dominion, it's rebellion. So the first thing we must understand, a man who is not saved is in rebellion. Forget anything you see about him. So that is something today. If Gangote yes. died today without Jesus, if Gangote dies today without Jesus, is in danger so look it's just quite sad that the church has commonized what dominion is the early church did not have all the money gold and silver i have none but what i have i give unto you in the name of jesus stand up and walk with that singular act turn the whole of jerusalem so we must understand what god calls dominion now does that mean god is against, does that mean god is against money or against man uh, I mean, no 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 god is not against that but we must understand what god called dominion dominion is what a man has only in christ a man outside christ no matter the number of skyscraper he has no matter the number of jets and cities he has in the world standard is having dominion is in fact the president of the nation today you know is having dominion by man's standard. For if he's an unbeliever, that's not dominion. Because if Jesus appears today, he's part, he's part of the enemy of Jesus. Hallelujah. He's part of the enemy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we understand this. Yeah. So you know, that's why I have reservation. I, I, I'm not against this issue of the seven mountains of influence. I'm not against it. But we must understand some things. That the kingdom of this world, eh? is not of God yet. The Bible told us that the kingdom of the earth will be is of will be of, Christ, of God and his Christ. It's Christ and it shall reign forever. Will be. We must understand this thing. So yes, there's a God is uh, called Satan. Is the, is the one who's in charge of systems and ordinances. However, we are raised by God to put him in check, to occupy it with Christ comes. Do you understand? So it's very good, it's very beautiful. We have influence in entertainment, we have influence in kidney. But as much as we are doing that, you will you will agree with me that the richest entertainer today are still on God the entertainers. Even though we have believers who are making waves and they are silly souls with their own entertainment, with their own songs, with their own videos, with their own movies. So we can keep doing that, but we are not in competition with the world. We are not in competition with the world. We are on the mandate, not in competition with the world. We are on the mandate to exterminate the system of the devil. We are not in competition with him. That said, now we must understand uh, about the issue of uh, man ruling man. Let me say this to you: Jesus redeemed man. We still live in a fallen world. That is why the Bible spoke about a new heaven and a new earth. There will be newness. Is this a computer chapter 3 verse 10? Of, is this a computer 3 10 or 1st chapter 3 10? The Bible tells us that everything, that is why it's an image of that. When first Christians don't understand this, these things clearly. You know, there are responses, there are, there are two kinds of responses you can have to issue. 
Eh? Second, second Peter 3 verse 10, if you have there. It says, but the day of the Lord will come as it is in the night. He wish the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. And the elements are met with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are daring shall be burnt up. So we have everything that we are building today. Eh? When the day of the Lord comes, they will burn up. That is the next truth. So, listen, I, I want to build the university. I want to have a helicopter. It's better. The Lord told me I will, if Christ dies. However, I know that when the day of the Lord comes, we are not going to carry any helicopter to heaven. We are not going to, everything will be born, will be born to by fire. Go and read it. It's a computer three verse 10. Go and read it. It's there. So, we, do you know why? Because the corruptible cannot inherit the corruptible. Everything on this face of this earth is, is falling. Let me use that word. It's falling. It's, it's, it's uh, I, I don't want to use the word cost. Yes. Some of our nature. It's falling. So, because we live in a falling world, there are falling systems. Uh, men can be redeemed, but the system is not yet redeemed. So the system has been changed from how it used to be. So today we will still have men ruling men. That's the honest truth. We have men ruling men. But God gave us an order in the church. You know, the church is a, is a, is a prototype of the kingdom that Jesus will rule on. God said, Jesus told the disciples, said the greatest among you, said the kings of this world, eh, they are known by 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 lording it over their, their, their followers. So, but it yeah. will not be so among you. The greatest yeah. among you will eat. Do you understand? The, the, your, your, your leader or your, the ruler will be a servant. So in the church, Jesus gave us an example by doing feet washing. By doing feet washing. Mm. So in the church, eh, the pattern is that yeah. even when God places you in the position of rulership, you are not ruling as it were. You are serving. You are serving. So God is not in the church. God gave us a good pattern. We are not to rule. We are to lead. So there will be leaders because actually, even in the in the, in the first Adam was a leader. The first the first Adam was our leader in the in the in the first Adamic race. The same way in the last Adam there is a leader. The Bible called him the firstborn from the dead, Jesus. So there will be leaders. But he has given us a point. He has given us like it's more rulership. Is leading with his service, rendering service. So in his kingdom, which is the which is prototyped by the church, that is why many things you know when we see something happening in church today, and people who God placed in the position of of leadership now trying to usurp authority over people, you know, try to do all kind of things over people anyhow. It shows that we have brought in the ideas of the world into the church. The kingdom of Jesus is put out in the church, and that kingdom, the leaders serve. The leaders serve. Please, is it clear? Yes. Hallelujah. Restore. Is it clear? Yes, that is clear. It's very clear. Good. So that's the point about about um, dominion and the uh, rulership. So do we have another question? Brethren, do we have any other question? question before we Oh Jesus? No. Okay, that is okay. Um, uh, um, I, I, I have this again. Now, considering the fact that you also said um, the issue of the woman, I, I, I can't hear you uh, very well. Then, then, considering the issue of what you said to concerning the woman, the woman helping the man in having dominion. Yes. No. Um. So it looks as if. From that scripture that what God only created the woman for was for childbearing I want to ask if that's limited to childbearing now please let, let's understand this clearly the childbearing eh, in the first creation I mean in the first Adam eh, yes was by water I can was so pivotal that it was I can say it's, it's the most important thing eh, that man can do. I mean when I say man, I mean man and woman together. Can I 
achieve. That is the great, that's their greatest achievement. Mm. Hello, brethren. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, I, I, I want to believe that our, um, our minister is currently having probably a trouble network or something. Um, I, I wouldn't know. Maybe anyone will be, will be asking questions so that we'll know, you know, how to manage our time. Please, if you think you have any question, please just just say I have question. Just say I have question so that we'll know how to time ourselves. Please, we are waiting. All right. I believe no one is saying he or she has a question. All right. Um, let's pray. Let's pray as, as, we, as we round off this meeting today. Um, Father, we thank you for everything you've taught us this evening. Thank you for breathing upon us, man, and what you have created him to do, which is actually to have dominion. We therefore ask, let the anointing for dominion, let it come upon us afresh in our place of work, in our day-to-day activities, let there be the strength, the grace, the spirit, the mind, the power to advance God, to have dominion in the name of Jesus. Everyone is blessed tonight. School of Prayer, we call you blessed. We call you blessed. You will take the gospel of God to the nations in the name of Jesus. 